Hi, this is Dr. Hayek and in this video we will be practicing SN1 and SN2 mechanisms on chair conformation. If we start with the following example, we can see that this alkyl halide here is a second degree. And also we know that an OH- is a strong nucleophile. So when I have a second degree alkyl halide with a strong nucleophile, the mechanism therefore will be an SN2 mechanism. So for an SN2 mechanism, we know that bond making and bond breaking happens at the same time. And also we know that the nucleophile will attack from the back side of the halide and therefore now the attack will be depicted like this. So in this case, we obtain the following product. So I'll try to draw it in here. Okay, so there's no change on this carbon. So if CH3 is on axial, it will remain on axial. So I'll just draw these bonds as well. Okay, and now the CH3 here, which is on an equatorial, it will remain on the equatorial and this hydrogen will stay on the axial. However, here, when the nucleophile attacked from the backside of the halide, it pushed the axial hydrogen to the equatorial and the nucleophile sits on the axial. Now we know that an SN2 mechanism results into inversion of configuration. And if we look at the CH3 here and the BR, they're facing opposite sides and therefore this is going to be a trans configuration. However, here we can see that CH3 and OH, they're both facing up and therefore this is cis. And here you go, so SN2, you have an inversion of configuration. And one important note to add is that if the halide and the alkyl halide on the equatorial bond, the nucleophile will sit on the axial and vice versa. So this is what will result in an inversion of uh, configuration. Let's discuss another example of cyclohexane where we have uh, water as the nucleophile and we know that water is a neutral nucleophile and therefore it's a weak nucleophile. Now looking back at the alkyl halide we can see that this is a second degree alkyl halide. Now we know that a second degree alkyl halide with a weak nucleophile the reaction will undergo an SN1 mechanism. Now SN1 mechanism will happen in two steps where the first step is the formation of the carbocation and the second step is the bond making with the nucleophile. Now the carbocation will result from the heterolytic cleavage of the CBR bond and therefore we will get the carbocation now on this carbon nothing will change however here the BR will just disappear and therefore for this one we get the CH3 remains on the equatorial H remains on the axial and here we have the axial H here and therefore here we have the positive charge so this is the carbocation in here now of course we have water and also the BR minus that was cleaved so that's the BR minus now carbocation is uh, sp2 hybridized carbon and therefore the geometry is trigonal planar which means that water can attack from above the plane like this or from below the plane like this and therefore in this case I will have a mixture of products so the first one where always I say that nothing will change on this carbon 
Now I will draw the bonds and then I will add the substituents. So here you have a CH3 H as always nothing changes. Now if I have the attack that's coming from below the H will remain on the axial bond and then the nucleophile which is water it will be substituted on the equatorial and now water oxygen will have three bonds and therefore it will carry a positive charge the second compound will be so again axial hydrogen equatorial CH3 and here I'll draw the two bonds and so this is the CH3 equatorial hydrogen axial now when the attack happens from above the plane it will push this hydrogen to the equatorial and therefore water will sit on the axial bond and I will have it like this always don't forget the positive charge okay so now this br minus the br minus that resulted from the cleavage of the uh, carbon br bond okay it's in solution and therefore what will happen it will take the one of the hydrogens okay on oxygen so the bond here will the electrons in the bond here will form a second lone pair on the oxygen and therefore the positive charge will just disappear so this is a crucial step you should not forget it in this case we will obtain our two products now the first one where I have the OH on the equatorial so always I have here H H and CH3 and the second one this is where I have the OH sitting on the axial bond as you can see it in here so that's the CH3 as always the hydrogen and then here I have the OH and here I have H now let's take a look on the stereochemistry so considering that the CH3 and the BR in here are in trans position or configuration in respect to each other and here I can see that the CH3 and the OH are also trans since they are facing opposite sides however the CH3 here and the OH they're both facing the same side the upside and therefore this is going to be cis so remember SN1 will always give you a mixture of stereoisomers now in this case the BR was on equatorial bond so as you can see it in here the BR is on equatorial we will have one OH on an equatorial and another on an axial 